Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first installment of So You Think You Know Baseball in a virtual format. We are very glad that you could join us today. Baseball trivia from Cooperstown, New York, broadcasting not too far from the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. We thank everybody for joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bruce Marcus, and I work in the Education Department at the Hall of Fame and I'll be your host for today's program. It is called So You Think You Know Baseball. It's a game that we have featured now for probably about 20 years at the museum. Um, when the museum is open, we feature it in our bullpen theater. Uh, as the museum is currently closed, we thought we would try this out in an online virtual format, and uh, we're very glad to have uh, four families of contestants who will be participating today the Clancy's, the Holstrom's, the McIntyre's, and the Greenberg's. They'll be playing for a family membership to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, membership is a great way for you to stay connected. If you uh, do become a member of the Hall of Fame, you get our magazine, Memories and Dreams, six times a year. You'll get uh, discounts for our online shop. And when the museum does reopen, you would get free admission to the Hall of Fame and Museum as well. All right, it's time to get to our game. So you think you know baseball. Our first contestants joining us are Sean Clancy and his son, 11-year-old Miles. And Miles, I am told that you are such a baseball fanatic. You have an incredible collection and you keep everything in alphabetical order, which I find very impressive. Tell us about your collection. Um. It's. What do you have in your collection, Miles? Baseball cards. Baseball cards. So you keep them alphabetically. That's an interesting way to do it. Yeah, alphabetically, and then like so, within the person by year. By year, okay. And does your father help you out with that, or you do this all by yourself? My mom actually helps me out with that. She doesn't know who they are, but she likes sorting things. Nice, nice. So everybody in the family is a baseball fan? No, my mom isn't. <laughs> your mom isn't, but she's still willing to help you out she's in helped. organizing your she's collection. Helped. Very good, very good. All right. What we're going to do, Miles, is we're going to give you a chance to play so you think you know baseball. You're going to try to get through nine innings worth of multiple choice questions. Uh, your father, Sean, can certainly help you out. We also have our three lifelines available. First off is poll our participants. We will actually take a poll of our audience members to see what their consensus on the right answer might be. And the way that participants can help out is through what is called the Zoom group chat. Either at the top or the bottom of your screen, um, there is a place where there's three dots. You hit the three dots, then there's a scroll a down bar that shows chat. And if you press on that, your chat box will open up and that is where you will have a chance uh, to post your answer to try to help out our participant or our contestant, Miles. Uh, the second of the three lifelines is the 50-50 toss up. That is where the host, that would be me, will remove two potential answers and that will leave the contestant with two answers, one being correct, one being incorrect, but you'll then have a 50-50 chance at coming up with the correct answer. And then the third and final lifeline is call to the bullpen. And that's where the contestant can ask a, one of our viewers to help with an answer. And if a viewer thinks they know the answer, we're going to ask them to uh, press a button on their computer screen that says raise hand. That'll indicate that they think they know the answer. They want to try to help. And then our contestant will call upon that viewer to help answer the question. Now, these three lifelines, you don't have to use them in this order. You can use any of the three lifelines in any order, but only one time for each lifeline. All right, Miles, you ready to play? Yeah. Okay, here we go. First inning question coming up. Category is popular culture. According to the lyrics of the 1908 song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, the line says, buy me some peanuts and blank. 
Is it A, nachos with cheese? B, Cracker Jack? C, is it Gatorade? Or D, is it soda pop? It's Cracker so What do you think, Miles? Cracker Jack. Okay. You're going to go with B, Cracker Jack. Sean, you agree with this? <laughs> yes? Yes. All right. Sean agrees. And with good reason. You're absolutely correct, Miles. Cracker Jack is correct. The line is, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack from the famous song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. All right, Miles. Good job. You're off to a good start. Let's go now to the second inning. Category is records. The question, how many consecutive games was Joe DiMaggio's record 1941 hitting streak? Was it A, 61 games, B, 44 games, C, 56 games, D, 39 games? 56. All right. Miles, sounds confident. Going to go with 56 consecutive games for Jody's hitting streak. And that is absolutely correct. The longest hitting streak in the history of Major League Baseball. There actually have been longer streaks in the minor leagues. But in terms of the major leagues, Joe DiMaggio has the record 56 straight games back in that incredible season of 1941. All right, Miles, you're off to a good start. How do you feel? Feel good. Yeah, you're not nervous? Well, I am nervous, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we like an honest participant. Very good. Well, it's good to be a little bit nervous. Keeps you on your toes. So we move now to the third inning. What category? It is rules. The question. The first rule of Major League Baseball, which is rule 1.01, states that baseball is played between two teams of how many players? Is it A, 8, B, 6, C, 11, or D, 9? It's 9. All right. Miles is going to go with 9. Eight doesn't think that's enough. Six, not enough. Eleven is too much. Thinks nine is just right. And you are correct, Miles. Of course, in the American League, in a sense, you can say it's ten because you have the designated hitter. But according to the rule book, 101, baseball is a game played between two teams of nine players each. All right, very good. Three for three as Miles gets off to a great start, and so you think you know baseball. Now we move on to the fourth inning of play. Category is baseball today. Whose signature is on every current official Major League Baseball? Babe Ruth, A. B, Bud Selig. C, Robert Manfred, Jr., or D, Jackie Robinson? Has to be Robert Manfred. Okay, going to say has to be Robert Manfred. Uh, who is Robert Manfred, by the way, Miles? Do you know? know? He's the commissioner. He's the commissioner of baseball. So, Miles sounds confident, says the commissioner. Robert Manfred Jr. is the name on the baseball Miles, once again, is correct. Well, we were told Miles knew baseball, certainly doing that well over the first four innings. All right, we move on. Fifth inning of play. Category, players. Which of these players who lost his leg in a hunting accident became the subject of a movie starring Jimmy Stewart? Is it A, Pete Gray, B, Curtis Pride, C, Monty Stratton, or D, Jim Abbott? It's not Jim Abbott, but I don't know who it is. Not sure who it is. You want to do All right. Yeah, we need to do a lifeline. Okay, what the okay you want to do a lifeline. You have three possibilities. We can pull the participants. Do an informal survey of the viewers, see what they might have to say about it. We can do the 50-50 toss-up, or we can do the call to the bullpen, where you would actually communicate with one of our participants, one of our viewers, I should say, 
and hopefully that person will give you the right answer. So Miles, which of the three lifelines would you like to use? Let's do the poll of the participants. All right, so we're gonna poll our participants. And in order to do that, we're gonna ask people to go into the Zoom group chat, the chat box function, and put up their answers. Isaac, who's been doing a lot of our programs, says Pete Gray. Ryan says Pete Gray. Jeff has a different answer, likes Monty Stratton. Max says Curtis Pride. Carter says Monty Stratton. Kenneth says Monty Stratton. Getting a few more answers here. Monty Stratton coming up quite a bit. So Miles, we're getting a lot of responses that are coming in. The vast majority say Monty Stratton. We had a couple for Pete Gray, yeah. and I believe a couple for Curtis Pride. So what do you say? You go with Stratton, that's what the audience says, or do you want someone else? I'm gonna go with Monty, Monty Stratton. Okay, so Miles is going to agree with the consensus, polling the participants. The vast majority of our viewers are saying that they believe the movie starring Jimmy Stewart is based on Monty Stratton. Let us see if that is the correct answer. It is. The movie actually was called The Monty Stratton Story. Uh, it's a film that came out many years ago. I believe it's a black and white film, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jimmy Stewart, considered one of our greatest American actors, uh, starred in many, many films. It's a Wonderful Life, several Hitchcock movies. But yes, he did play Monty Stratton, a major league pitcher, uh, who lost part of his leg in a hunting accident and still managed to come back and pitch briefly in the major league. So one of the lifelines has been used up, Miles. That's the bad news. The good news is you're still alive. You got the answer correct. So now we move on to the sixth inning. Category is teams. The question, in 1970, what team did the Seattle Pilots become? Is it A, Texas Rangers, B, Milwaukee Brewers, C, Montreal Expos, D, Seattle Mariners? It was the Brewers. All right, Miles going to go with B, Milwaukee Brewers. You're sounding confident again. You like that answer? Yeah. All right. Going to go with B, Milwaukee Brewers. Seattle Pilots were an expansion team in 1969. They lasted exactly one season. And after the 1969 season, just before 1970, they did move to Milwaukee and they became known as the Brewers. Good job, Miles. You are done two-thirds of the way. Six innings complete. We now move to the seventh. The category. World Series. What team won the first modern World Series in 1903? Was it Boston of the American League? Pittsburgh of the National League? Was it Boston of the National League? Or was it New York? Uh, and I believe is it, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading that part of the screen. Does it say New York NL? National League? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for helping me out on that. So Boston American League, Pittsburgh National League, Boston National League, or New York National League? Those are the four possibilities. What do you think, Miles? I know it's one of the Boston teams. I just don't know if it's AL or NL. All right. So um, you've narrowed it down to two of the Boston teams. Now, we do have our 50-50 remaining, where I would eliminate two of the wrong answers, leaving you with one correct answer and one incorrect answer. 
We also have call to the bullpen where you could ask one of our viewers to help you out. Let's do the 50-50. Okay, Miles has gone for the lifeline, the 50-50 toss up. So we're gonna eliminate two of the incorrect answers. That means we're gonna eliminate Boston National League and New York National League. And that is going to leave us with the two answers, Boston American League and Pittsburgh National League. Boston American Either Boston American League or Pittsburgh National League. Boston American League. So Miles is pretty confident that it's one of the Boston teams. We eliminated the National League version of Boston. Miles is going to go with Boston, the American League version. Is it correct? Let us see. Absolutely. Boston of the American League. Uh, the reason we give only the city name is because teams back then, their nicknames, they often changed. Uh, sometimes this Boston team was called the Americans. Sometimes they were called the Pilgrims, but the, the nickname was not a, a formal or permanent thing. Boston of the American League is absolutely correct. Miles, now seven for seven has one lifeline remaining for our final two questions. All right, Miles, we move on, eighth inning. The category, announcers. Which Hall of Fame player was an announcer of the Phillies for over 30 years? Is it A, Richie Ashburn, B, Chuck Klein, C, Robin Roberts, D, Jim Bunning? All four Hall of Famers, yeah, they are. only one is the correct answer. Dad says Richie Ashburn, and he's grown up with the Phillies, so I'm going to go okay. with that. Man, a lot of pressure here. Yeah. Are you guys in the Philadelphia area? No, we're more towards Washington. You're more toward Washington, but you're a Phillies fan. Up. Yeah, I grew up outside Philadelphia. All right. So yeah. you're pretty confident, right? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, Sean's pretty sure. Not 100%, but he's pretty sure. Miles has confidence in you. So the answer that you're going to go with is A, Richie Ashburn, correct? Correct. All right, let's see. Is it right? Of course it is. Richie Ashburn, longtime Phillies player, longtime broadcaster, more than three decades. Eight innings down, one inning to go. You still have a lifeline. Call to the bullpen if you need it. Miles, you ready for the ninth inning? Yeah. All right, here we go. Category, players. The question, on May 14th, 1967, Mickey Mantle blasted his 500th career home run. And exactly two months later, right, let me, I'm sorry, I didn't read that quite properly. Mantle blasted his 500th career home run. What player exactly two months later joined Mantle in the 500 home run club? So Mantle hits number 500, May 14th. Two months later, another player joins Mantle in the 500 homer club. Is it A, Eddie Matthews, B, Ernie Banks, C, Hank Aaron, or D, Willie Mays? I, it's not Willie Mays because I think 69 or 70 was his, 68 or 69 was his last year. And he wouldn't, and he has more than 600 home runs, so he wouldn't get 150 in two years because he was in decline. So, thinking this through. Now, you do have that one lifeline remaining. You can use it here, no penalty for that. You're free to use that lifeline, call to the bullpen. Yeah, I'll use that. All right, so I would see that. Miles is going to call to the bullpen. If anybody thinks they know the right answer, we're going to ask them to press the raise hand button on your computer screen. The raise hand button. The raise hand button. So far, three participants have raised their hand. Now, Miles, can you see those participants? I can. Okay. 
So we've got five participants now, now up to six. We'll give it a couple more seconds. Up to eight participants. All right. Of those eight participants, is there somebody that you're particularly confident in, Miles? Hold on. I'm going to think it over. Can you see them? I can see uh, six of them. Hold on. Who looks real smart to you? <laughs> so, six. John, Max, Mike, Thomas, Jillian, and Deb. It's just mm. guessing. What do you think, Miles? Just pick I'm going to go with Deb. Okay, Miles wants to call on Deb. Deb, what do you say? Is it Eddie Matthews, Ernie Banks, Hank Aaron, or Willie Mays? Well, I believe it is Eddie Matthews. All right. Deb says, I believe it is Eddie Matthews. Sounds pretty confident to me. Miles, you want to go with that as your answer? I believe in Deb. Miles believes in Deb. Let's see. Is it correct? Absolutely. Deb was on the money. Deb. Miles is on the money as well. Deb. And congratulations, Miles. Not only were you our first contestant in our virtual edition of So You Think You Know Baseball, but you're a champion as well. You will win a family membership to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Let's everybody have a nice round of applause. We want to be able to hear you, but you can applaud nonetheless. Good job, Miles. That's great. Yeah. Hey. That was great fun. Terrific. Excellent work by Miles and his yeah. father, Sean. So hopefully... Uh, um, we'll see you both in Cooperstown when the museum reopens later this summer. All right? Hope so. Look forward to it. Thank you. Though. All right. Thank you, guys. Miles and Sean Clancy joining us today. Miles, our first contestant and our first champion in So You Think You Know Baseball. Very good. All right. We now get ready to move on to our second game. And our second contestant, the Holstrom family, uh, we have Edward, who is 11 years of age, and joined by his father, Ted. Edward and Ted, how are you doing today? Good. We are, we are well, and uh, thanks for having us. We're very excited. Edward is extremely excited, and want to say congratulations to Miles and his dad. That was awesome. Very good, very good. Now, Edward, I am told that you are an absolute baseball trivia fanatic. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So you love baseball. You follow it closely. What teams do you guys like? Our favorite team is the White Sox, but um, our favorite team in the National League is the Braves. We're, we're big White Sox fans, and uh, we've gone to Chicago, uh, just the two of us, and with my dad sometimes, to Fan Fest. That's an annual trip we try to do. Edward loves meeting players and talking to players and getting pictures and autographs. As at 11 years old, his walls are covered with baseball pictures. But uh, we also, we love the history of the game. We're both big Clemente fans. And I think Edward would probably tell you his, his favorites are Mantle, Clemente, Jackie Robinson, Griffey. Anyone yeah. I'm missing? Um, no, you got it. That's it. Nice, nice. And how far are you guys from Chicago? So we're in Rich. We're, we're actually we're in Williamsburg, Virginia. We're oh, from okay. Rich, so we are quite a ways, but we make that that trip as often as we can. And if we don't see the White Sox in Chicago, we try to see them somewhere else. We all we're just huge baseball fans, though. I think Edward has done what about fifteen parks already at eleven years right. old. So. Thirteen. Thirteen. So. And I've been to Williamsburg a couple of times. Um, I love the historic village there. Um, we went there a couple of years ago as a family. It was extraordinarily hot. It was about 100 degrees, but still a lot of fun going through historic Williamsburg. All right, that's enough on my travel itinerary. Let's get to the game. It's called So You Think You Know Baseball. Once again, a reminder of our three lifeline rules. We can pull the participants where we take an informal poll of our audience members to see what their answer might be. We can do a 50-50 toss-up. That means I'll remove two of the wrong answers, leaving one correct and one incorrect answer. 
And then also we can do poll to the bullpen where our contestant can ask one uh, of our participants, our viewers, to help with the answer. And that's where we'll ask the viewers to um, hit the raise hand button on their computer screen to indicate they want to help. All right, Edward and Ted Hallstrom are next up. Inning number one, ready to go, Edward? Yes. All right, first question. Category is managers. Who managed the Yankees to World Series titles in four or five seasons from 1996 to 2000? Is it A, Miller Huggins, B, Joe McCarthy, C, Joe Torrey, or D, the boss, George Steinbrenner? I think Joe Torrey. Okay, so Edward says he thinks it's Joe Torrey. Ted, you want to chime in on this one? I will go with Edward. Going to go with Edward. Thinks Edward is right, and you are absolutely correct. He is right. Joe Torrey managed the Yankees to four world championships in that span from 1996 to 2000. Miller Huggins and Joe McCarthy were Yankee managers, but a long, long time ago. And, of course, the late George Steinbrenner was the Yankee owner from the early 1970s until his passing. Inning number two, Edward, the category is baseball history. Major League Baseball has retired uniform number 42 in honor of which of these players? A, Mariana Rivera, B, Babe Ruth, C, Cy Young, or D, Jackie Robinson? Jackie Robinson. I'm gonna go with D, Jackie Robinson. And that is absolutely correct. 1997, MLB announced that he had retired uniform number 42 universally throughout the game. So no major league or minor league players, for that matter, can wear the number except on April 15th, which is Jackie Robinson Day. All right, Edward has handled the first two innings with relative ease. Let's go to the third. Category is pitcher. Name the big league pitcher who tossed back-to-back no-hitters back in 1938. Was it A, Allie Reynolds, B, Johnny Vandermeer, C, Bob Feller, or D, Virgil Trucks? I believe Johnny Vandermeer. All right. Edward, pretty confident that it's Johnny Vandermeer. Going to go with that selection over Allie Reynolds, Hall of Famer Bob Feller, and Virgil Trucks. Now, Edward, did you ever see Johnny Vandermeer pitch? No. Probably not. I don't know that we have too many people in our audience today who uh, were around back in 1938. Doesn't matter, though. Johnny Vandermeer is absolutely correct. He did pitch back-to-back no-hitters during the 1938 season, did so for the Cincinnati Reds. All right, good job, Edward. It's time now to go to the fourth inning. Sure. Hall of Famers is our category. The question, Hall of Fame pitcher Hoyt Wilhelm hit a home run in his first big league at bat, but how many more did he hit after that in his 21-year career? Was it A, one home run, B, zero, C, five, D, ten? So he hits a home run in his first at bat. We want to know how many more did he hit after that? One, zero, five, or ten? Um, yeah. I think Edward's, Edward wants to um, – I, I think you want to pull the audience? Yes. Pull the audience here. Okay. He has so a guess, like but I think he's saying – Three lifetimes. We're going to pull the participants – So what we'll do is we'll ask anybody that is watching along with us to go into their chat and type in what they think might be the correct answer. First to chime in is Max Thompson, zero. Thomas O'Donnell says zero. Will says five. And now we're getting a whole bunch of zeros coming in from other viewers. Jim, Sean, Ryan all say zero. So it looks like the consensus is that Hoyt Wilhelm 
didn't hit a single home run after hitting a home run in his first major league at bat. That is what the audience says. Yes, zero. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's what Edward thought it was. And, of course, Wilhelm pitched for the White Sox. Um, and he ah, was pretty right. confident, but, but not sure. So, yeah, we'll go zero. Yes. That's right. So you're going to go with zero. You're going to agree with the audience. Was the audience right? Of course they were. Zero is the correct answer. Just one of those statistical oddities. Wilhelm hits a home run his first major league at bat. He then plays for many seasons, and he plays before the DH, so he came to bat quite a few times, but never hit another home run. All right. Well done, Edward. Well done, audience. Four for four. And so you think you know baseball? Let's move to the fifth inning. Our category is records. The question, who holds the single season record for RBI, which of course is runs batted in, with 191? Is it A, Hack Wilson? Is it B, Hank Greenberg? Is it C, Melot? Or is it D, Jimmy Fox? All four are Hall of Famers, but only one has this record. 191 RBIs, one season. Hack Wilson, Hank Greenberg, Mel Ott or Jimmy Fox? What do you think, Edward? I, I'm almost positive it's Hack Wilson. All right. You want to go with that, or do you want to use one of your lifelines? What do you feel? I'm going with Hack Wilson. Okay. Not going to use a lifeline here. Saving those for later. Hopefully there will be a later. Will there be a later? Let's see. Hack Wilson, is that right? Yeah, it is. There's going to be a later. You can use that lifeline later. Hack Wilson, 191 RBIs for the Chicago Cubs. This was an interesting record. At first, it was calculated as 190 RBIs. And then years later, some statistical researchers, they went back, they looked through the box scores, the official day-to-day -day records, they determined that Wilson had been shorted by one RBI, so it was revised to 191, and that does stand as the current record. All right, five innings are done, four to go. You still have two lifelines, Edward. You have 50-50 as the toss-up, and you have call to the bullpen. We go to the sixth. Category is baseball history. With what club did Babe Ruth hit his 714th and final big league home run? Was it A, New York Yankees, B, Boston Braves, C, Brooklyn Dodgers, D, Boston Red Sox? Boston Braves. All right. Going to go with B, the Boston Braves. Babe Ruth is best known for playing for the Yankees, pitching for the Red Sox. Where did he hit that 714th and final home run? He hit it as a member of the Boston Braves. You are correct. Nicely done. Six innings are complete. You still have two lifelines, so you're in good shape, Edward. Let's move to the seven. The category, again, is history. Another Babe Ruth question. On August 11th, 1929, Babe Ruth became the first player to hit 500 career home runs. Who was the second to reach the milestone? Was it A, Mel Ott, B, Jimmy Fox? Was it C, Mickey Mantle? Was it D, Willie Mays? Babe was the first to get to 500. Who was the second? What are you thinking? Um. Fox did get to 500. Okay. You, can, you got a life line if you want to use it. Do you know if Ott made it? How many did Ott end up with? I don't know. What do you think? Um, uh, I, think I, I think they all have five, more than 500. Okay. Um, I think I want to do the 50 50. 50-50? Yes. So everyone wants to go with the 50-50 lifeline. We'll do the 50-50. We'll eliminate two of the wrong answers. 
So let's take away Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays, leaving us with either Mel Ott or Jimmy Fox. Um, Mel Ott. Going to go with A, Mel Ott over B, Jimmy Fox. Let's see if that is correct. Oh, sorry, Edward. It was double X, Jimmy Fox. But you did very well. You got to the seventh inning. You only used two lifelines. Obvious, you know a lot about baseball and baseball history. So I want to thank you for playing. You did a good job today. Thank you, Edward, and thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. We enjoyed it. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you in Cooperstown in the not too distant future. And hopefully the White Sox will be playing soon as well. All right, very good. We move on now to our third contestants. We have young Declan McIntyre, 10 years of age, and his father, Brian. They're gonna be joining us on the line. Another game of So You Think You Know Baseball. Declan and Brian, how are you? Good. Doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well. Where do you guys live? Um, we live in Alexandria, Virginia. Alexandria, Virginia. Very good. And what team do you follow? Um, I mostly follow the Red Sox, the Astros, and the Nationals. Oh, you got three different teams you like. The Red Sox, the Astros, and the Nationals. Now, two of those three were in the World Series last year. So who are you rooting for? I was actually rooting for the Astros, and I got a World Series. We're rooting for the Astros. Wow. It was it was a uh, big strife in our family because it, it divided us down the middle. My wife is from Houston. Ah. Uh, so they rooted okay. for the and myself and my other older son rooted for the Nationals. All right. So you had some of the family going for Washington, some of the family going for Houston. Yes, sir. Maybe we have some Washington and Houston questions. We'll have to wait and see. Quick review of our lifelines. Poll our participants. You can do a 50-50 toss-up, or you can do the call to the bullpen where you ask one especially intelligent viewer for help. All right, you ready to go, Declan? Yes. All right, here we go. First inning, the category is pitchers. The question, what pitcher holds Major League Baseball's career record for saves with 652? Is it A, Mark Melanson, B, Mariano Rivera, C, Francisco Rodriguez, or D, Juris Familia? I'm going to go with Mani Mani <laughs> Mariano Rivera. It can be a tough name to say, especially if you try to say it too fast. You're going to go with B, Mariano Rivera. Uh, he's the only one of these four that currently is in the Hall of Fame. And yes, he does hold the Major League Baseball career record, 652 saves. All right, good job, Declan. You're off to a great start. Let's go to the second inning. Category, Hall of Famers. The question. While Hall of Fame pitcher Nolan Ryan holds the big league record with seven no-hitters, who is second on this all-time list with four no-hitters? Is it A, Jared Weaver, B, Max Scherzer, C, Homer Bailey, or D, Sandy Koufax? Um, I'm going to go with Sandy Koufax. going to go with D, Sandy Koufax. Koufax is retired. Weaver is retired. Scherzer and Bailey are still pitching. But only one of the four has four no-hitters to his name, and you are right. It is D, Sandy Koufax. All right, good job, Declan. On to the third inning. Category. World Series. Can you name the only big league team to win three World Series titles between 2004 and 2013? Is oh, it Boston, Red Sox, New York Yankees, C, Texas Rangers, or D, the St. Louis Cardinals? I'm sorry about that. I'm um, sorry? I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh, that's okay. Um, I'm going to go with the Boston Red Sox. You're going to go with A, Boston Red Sox. Pretty confident in this one, right? I, I grew up a Red Sox fan, so this is pretty near and dear to my heart. Uh, 
Okay, definitely. Yes. Boston Red Sox, only team to win the three World Series titles from 04 to 2013. All right, Declan, you're rolling. Three innings, three correct answers. Let's go to the fourth. Baseball and movies are category. What actor portrayed New York Yankees legend Lou Gehrig in the 1942 film The Pride of the Yankees? Was it A, John Goodman, B, Lou Gehrig himself, C, Gary Cooper, or D, William Bendix? Um, Gary Cooper. Say that again, Declan. Gary Cooper. You're going to go with C, Gary Cooper. It wasn't Garrick. It wasn't John Goodman or William Bendix. They both played Babe Ruth, a little bit heavier than Lou Garrick. You are correct. The answer is C, Gary Cooper played Garrick. We just talked about this movie last Friday with Ben Mankiewicz in Turner Classic Movies. In fact, his grandfather, Herman Mankiewicz, was one of the screenwriters for Pride <laughs> of the Yankees. Good job. We go to the fifth inning. Our category, players. The question, which hitter leads all Canadian-born players with 383 big league round trippers? Is it A, Matt Stairs, B, Larry Walker, C, Joey Votto, or D, Jason Bay? I'm going to go with Larry Walker. I'm going to go with B, Larry Walker. Larry Walker just elected to the Hall of Fame in January of this year. And yes, he holds the record among Canadian-born players, 383 career home runs. Well, Declan, you are just rolling. You have gotten five correct answers. You have not used a lifeline. We now move to the sixth inning. Hall of Famers. After spending 22 seasons as a star outfielder with the Detroit Tigers, with what team did Ty Cobb play his final two big league seasons of 1927 and 28? Is it A, Philadelphia A's, B, Boston Red Sox, C, Boston Braves, or D, Kansas City Royals? Um, Philadelphia A's. Okay. Declan is going with A, the Philadelphia Athletics, sounding confident once again. And with good reason, Declan is right. It was the Philadelphia Athletics. Cobb played for them in 1927 and 28. In fact, in our collection at the museum, we have a jersey that Ty Cobb used during those final two seasons with the Philadelphia A's. Well, Declan's rolling six innings, has not used a lifeline. He will now move to the seventh inning. The category is history. In what years did the Yankees and Mets share Shea Stadium as their home park? Was it 1981, 82, 1971, 72, 1974, 75, or 2008, 2009? 74, 75. All right. I'm going to go with 1974 and 1975. It says those are the two years that the Yankees and Mets shared Shea Stadium because Yankee Stadium was being renovated. Are those the correct years? Let's see. They sure are. 1974 and 75. And then in 76, the Yankees moved into the newly renovated Yankee Stadium. Seven innings down, two to go. All three lifelines remain. Declan, here we go, eighth inning. Category, players. In 1977, he became the first player to hit home runs for teams in four different divisions in the same season. Who is he? A, Dave Kingman. B, George Hendrick. C, Bobby Bonds. D, Reggie Smith. Uh, I think, I think we're going to turn in the crowd. Okay, you want to poll the participants? Yes, sir. All right, so anybody that thinks they have the answer, we're going to ask you to go into the Zoom group chat and write down, write in the chat box, what you think the answer is. Thomas O'Donnell says Dave Kingman. Ryan says Dave Kingman. 
Let's see who else chimes in on this one. Carter Wright says Bobby Bonds. Ryan Murnane says Bobby Bonds. So we've got three for Kingman, two for Bonds. Couple more for Kingman. Will, Don, Graham. They all like Kingman. So that's six for Kingman, two for Bonds. We'll see if anybody else. Max says Kingman. Liam says Kingman. Graham says Kingman. So overwhelmingly, the audience thinks Kingman. Couple of people say Bobby Bonds. What do you say, Declan? I think we're going to go with Kingman. Going to go with the audience. Going to go with Dave Kingman. Was he the player who in 1977 hit home runs for teams in four different divisions? Let's see. Yes, Dave Kingman did it, 1977. Let's see if we can remember what those four teams were. You had the New York Mets, San Diego Padres, California Angels, and New York Yankees. Four teams in one year hit home runs for all four, all in different divisions. <laughs> all right, we now move to the ninth inning. Declan, you have two lifelines remaining. You have the 50-50 toss-up, the call to the bullpen. You could use both if you wanted to. It's up to you. But first, let's see what the question is. History is the category. The question, who hit the first home run for the expansion Montreal Expos in 1969 and thus the first home run outside of the United States? Was it A, Manny Mota, B, Rusty Staub? Was it C, Mac Jones, or D, Maury Wills? We're going to go 50-50. Okay, they want to go to the 50-50. So we are going to eliminate two of the wrong answers. We are going to eliminate Manny Mota and Rusty Staub, leaving us with either Mac Jones or Maury Wills. Um, and then can we call on a person? If you'd like, you can do the call to the bullpen. If you want to do that, let us know, and we'll tell people to hit their raise hand buttons on the, on the computer. Want to yeah. go with that? Yep, go with that. Okay, so Declan wants to go to the call to the bullpen. So if you think you know the answer, we're going to ask you to raise your hand. And then Declan will choose one of those fine folk to try to help him out. Thomas O'Donnell has raised his hand. Not sure if anybody else has. Now, we do ask that people not look up these answers with their phone or on their computer. We want to try to keep things as fair as possible here. So we've had two participants raise their hand. Let's give it another moment, see if anybody else raises their hand. Three participants now, four. All right, we've got four participants have raised their hand. Uh, Declan, who would you like to choose? We're looking to see where the four people are, sorry. Um, we don't have any people that are like showing their hand. Like, we're looking down. Can you tell us who the four participants are? The four people who raised their hand? Um, I cannot, but let me check with our producer, Stephanie Hazard. Stephanie, do you know who the four participants are? The, the four participants are Thomas O'Donnell, Deb Williams, Jeremy, and Graham. Okay, so we have Thomas, Deb, who was successful in the first game, helping Miles to get a championship. Uh, and then we have uh, Jeremy and Graham. So those are the four choices. I'm pretty sure Jeremy is Jeremy Foch. So let's go with him. You know him? Yes, we do. Okay. Coach Jeremy, Coach. what do you say? Is it C, Mac Jones, or D, Maury Wills? Hey, this is David, and I'm here with Jeremy. We're pretty sure it's Mac Jones. All right, they're going to go with Mac Jones. Declan, you want to agree with that? Yes. All right. Declan agrees with Jeremy. Mac Jones. Let's see. Yes, it is Mac Jones. 
he was nicknamed Mac the Knife. He was an outfielder. He did play for the Expos in 69, as did these other players. But it was Jones who hit the first home run for the franchise and thus the first Major League home run outside of the United States. All right, you've used all your lifelines now, Declan, but you've got only one inning to go, the ninth inning. So let's see. I think that was the ninth, ninth inning. inning. Wait a minute. Well, that was the ninth inning. <laughs> You're done. You're a champion. There's no tenth inning. You are a winner. Well done. Let's have a nice round of applause from our virtual audience. I'm making you go extra innings here. We don't need extra. <laughs> you have one. Well done, Declan. So you join Miles as our second champion of the day. And for that, for getting all nine questions correct, uh, you get a family membership to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Nicely done. How do you feel, Declan? I feel good. Feel pretty good about it? Yeah? How, how about you, Brian? I, I feel pretty good. He, we, we took Declan to the Hall of Fame last year, and he loved it. I know he's going to love going back again. Excellent. Excellent. You need to all fill right. the time well, up with no baseball. We hope you both can make it to the Hall of Fame later in the year. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, Declan. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Nicely done. All right. We do have one more player to go. We have the Greenberg family that is going to be joining us. We're just going to switch games, take a little bit of a break here. So we'll let the Greenbergs move in. Take that game off the board. And if you'll bear with me just one second. All right, Jonathan and Daniel. Daniel, 10 years of age. Jonathan is father. Guys, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having us. All right, excellent. Greenberg, that's a Hall of Fame name. We have a Hall of Famer named Hank Greenberg. No relation? Um, there, there, uh, there is probably a relation. It's the second, really? second cousin of my grandfather. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Is that why you guys are baseball fans? Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Excellent. All right. The game. So you think you know baseball. Nine innings of multiple choice questions. We do have three lifelines to help you out. You can pull the participants. You can do the 50-50 toss-up, or you can do the call to the bullpen. Ready to play, guys? Yeah. All right. Here we go. First inning question. The category is teams, and unfortunately, I pressed the button incorrectly, so you've got the correct answer already. Uh, how many major league teams currently call California home? And because I was a little bit itchy on the trigger yeah. there. Bruce, Bruce, hold on. You got to share your screen. You might have oh, saved sorry. yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, let me you try might have that. Save yourself. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. This is what happens with live virtual programming. How about now? Can you see it now? No. Not yet, no. no. All right, let's try something else here. How about now? Yep. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Well, as I said, I gave you the correct answer, which is five. So you get this one as a freebie. Can you name the five franchises, uh, Daniel? Um, the Angels, Dodgers, Giants, the Athletics, and the Padres. Very good. So I think you would have gotten it right anyway. Obviously more than two, more than zero, and there are not 13 teams in California. <laughs> All right. Very good. Now we move second inning. Category is history. 
Where did the Dodgers call home prior to moving to Los Angeles in 1957? Brooklyn. Was it A, Manhattan, B, Staten Island, C, Queens, or D, Brooklyn? Brooklyn. All right, Daniel is going to go with D, Brooklyn. Let's see, is that correct? Absolutely, Brooklyn Dodgers. And then they moved to Los Angeles after the 1957 season. Good job there, Daniel, two for two. We move now to the third inning. Category, history of baseball. The question, who hit the shot heard round the world? A, Mickey Mantle, B, Willie Mays, C, Bobby Thompson, or D, Joe Carter? Um, Bobby Thompson. Going to go with C, Bobby Thompson. Playing for the New York Giants, yes, he did hit the shot heard round the world, winning the pennant for the Giants. All right, good job, Daniel. Let's move now to the fourth inning. Our category is rules. In what year was the designated hitter rule first introduced in the American League? Was it A, 1947, B, 1973, C, 1976, or D, 1977? If you're not sure, you do have three lifelines. Poll the participants, the 50-50, or the call to the bullpen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in the 70s, but I can't tell you when. Should we, should we poll the audience? Yeah. We'd like to poll the audience, please. Okay, fair enough. Daniel and Jonathan would like to poll the audience. So audience members, if you think you know the right answer among these four, 1947, 1973, 1976, 1977, we're going to ask you to chime in on the Zoom group chat with what you think is the correct answer. So let's see what we have. Carter has rung in with 1973. Don also says 1973. Mike says 1977. Graham says 1977. So we have two for 73, two for 77. Let's see who else. Thomas O'Donnell goes with 1973. Will goes with 1977. So we've got three for each of those years. Let's see who else comes in. So right now we have a tie among the audience between 1973 and 1977. First year for the designated hitter in the American League. Hmm. Max is voting for 1977. So we have five for 1977, four for 1973. So we don't really have a consensus, kind of a split decision among the audience. Hmm. All I can think of is Ron Blomberg. I'm just trying to think about when that could have been. Uh, we're going to, uh, I think. We're, I guess we're just going to go with 73. All right. You want to go with 1973. You said the name Ron Bloomberg. He was the first DH for the New York Yankees. And yes, it was 1973. You had me worried there for a moment, guys, but you came up with the right answer. Good job. Ron Bloomberg, correct. You still have two lifelines remaining. You have the 50-50 toss-up and the call to the bullpen. Well, let's go to the fifth. Category is players. The question, at six foot 11 inches, this former pitcher is the tallest player in Major League history. Can you name him? A, Chris Young. B, Randy Johnson. C, John Rauch. D, Eric Hillman. I'm going to go with John Rauch. I'm going to go with C, John Rauch. You've ever been to the museum up in the third floor exhibit called One for the Books. We have a Minnesota Twins uniform belonging to John Rauch, six foot 11. Yes, he is the tallest pitcher 
in Major League history. Nicely done, Daniel. Not an easy question. We move now to the sixth inning, the category, records. Whose record for hits in a season did Seattle's Ichiro Suzuki break when he collected 262 hits in 2004? Was it A, Ty Cobb, B, Tony Gwynn, C, George Sisler, D, Bill Terry? All four Hall of Famers, Cobb, Gwynn, Sisler, Terry, who had the record for most hits before Ichiro? Um, I think we're going to use the 50-50 here. Okay, they want to use the 50-50. We'll eliminate two of the wrong answers. So let's take away Ty Cobb and Tony Gwynn. It's going to leave us with either George Sisler or Bill Terry. We're going to go with George Sisler. I'm going to go with C, George Sisler. Hall of Famer, yes. He had the most hits in a season before Ichiro broke the record in 2004. Nicely done. Six innings down, three to go. You still have one lifeline remaining, and that's call to the bullpen. Seventh inning, the category, Hall of Fame. Can you name the Hall of Fame inductee who played five games for the 1998 Marlins? A, Mike Piazza. B, Steve Garvey. C, Ricky Henderson. D, Greg Maddox. Only played five games for the Marlins in 98 before being traded. It's actually traded twice that season. I'm going to go with Mike Piazza. Going to go with A, Mike Piazza. Confident about that? Yeah. Well, you should be. It is right. Mike Piazza is the correct answer. He started the season with the Dodgers, was then traded to the Marlins, played there a week, and then went on to the New York Mets, where he spent most of the balance of his major league career. Good job. We go to the eight. The category is awards. Who is the only player to win Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young Award in the same season? A, Dwight Gooden. B, Roger Clemens. C, Fernando Valenzuela. D, Bob Feller. Hmm. You have one lifeline remaining. That's call to the bullpen where you can ask one of our audience members. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going we're gonna to call to the bullpen and then take our chances with the ninth inning if we get there. Okay, so... Among our viewers, if you think you know this answer, we're going to ask you to hit the raise hand button. Already, we've had four people do that. Now we're up to five. Now we're up to six. See if that number continues to climb. Seems like everybody knows it except for us. <laughs> <laughs> we're up to eight participants who think they know the right answer. So, Daniel, of those eight, Anyone that you'd like to pick on? Yes, we're going to do with, uh, go with uh, Sean Clancy. Going to go with Sean Clancy, who was part of our first team, a championship team. So, Sean, which of these four answers do you like? Gooden, Clemens, Valenzuela, or Feller? I like Valenzuela. All right. That actually sounded like Miles to me. That's fine, though. <laughs> Miles very confidently says Fernando Valenzuela. He believes that Fernando won Rookie of the Year and Cy Young in the same season. Daniel, do you agree? Okay. We're going to go with Valenzuela. Daniel is going to agree with what young Clancy has to say. So let's see if it is correct. Absolutely. The year of Fernando Mania, 1981. And Thank Valenzuela you. won both Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young in the same season. Good job. Miles, thanks for the assist. Thanks, Miles. Now we move to the ninth inning. No lifelines remaining. Here is the question. Records. With what team did outfielder Earl Webb 
hit his major league record 67 doubles in 1931 with A, Boston Red Sox, B, Brooklyn Dodgers, C, Boston Braves, D, New York Giants. It's got the two Bostons, got Brooklyn and New York are the four possibilities. Earl Webb, not a household name, good outfielder, and in 1931, Hit a major league record, 67 doubles. All right, we're going to go with Boston Braves. All right, you're going to go with C, Boston Braves. Let's see if that is correct. Uh, oh, you were close. It was the Boston Red Sox. You had Boston Braves. Just a little bit short, but uh, great job, Daniel. You played a terrific game. Thank you. You really rolled through those early innings, used the lifelines to get to the ninth, and came, came quite close, but a good job. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so thanks much for having me. Thank you. And thanks to all of our other contestants, uh, Declan and Brian McIntyre, Ted and Edward Holstrom, and Sean and Miles Clancy. Uh, we gave away a couple of memberships today to our two champions, so not bad. Two champions out of four, that's a pretty good day for So You Think You Know Baseball. Uh, we're going to try this again next week. We hope you've enjoyed it in our debut edition, our virtual edition here. Reminder, we have another program coming up tomorrow. Not trivia, but it's one of our educational programs. It's a virtual field trip, pop culture through baseball cards, and that'll be at 1 o'clock tomorrow. If you go to our website, baseballhalloffame.org, or baseballhall.org to be more accurate, baseballhall.org, you can register for that program. Again, a free virtual field trip tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern time, pop culture through baseball cards. Folks, thanks for being with us. We do hope you enjoyed So You Think You Know Baseball. Have a great day. Thank you.